Okay, good morning, uh, Talam. We are here with Talam Tariam, who is the product manager of uh, SQL Azure, uh, one of the, clearly, one of the uh, star products uh, in relation with the cloud and with the Microsoft strategy in the cloud. But I think, it's, as always, uh, we, there is a, you know, a, a usage in all these interviews, and is that the interviewee uh, introduces himself. So. Can you please tell me your name, your role, and your everyday life in, in sure. Redmond? So um, my name is Tarun Tarin. I'm the product manager for SQL Azure, which is one of the products that's part of the Windows Azure platform. Essentially, it provides um, core data platform capabilities in the cloud. And my day-to-day -day, uh, work in Redmond involves ensuring that the right messages regarding our product gets out, that the right content is there to equip our customers as well as our sellers to uh, you know, get the word out there about our product and communicate its value. And I also work on some of the business-related aspects of how to increase adoption of our product. Okay. Uh, so I guess that you are the one in charge to talk about the virtues of the of the, of the product. Definitely. I'd love to do that. And also to try to avoid or ease in some way uh, those fears about the adoption. So as I said, um, we were going to start uh, talking about the main virtues of uh, SQL Azure, right? And then yes. we will go on the, mm -hmm. the, on the other side of the coin. Okay, what would you say are the main virtues right. of SQL Azure? Yeah, just before I get into the main virtues of SQL Azure, I just want to give you some context into why we're building it in the first place. Um, you know, the past decade has seen um, tremendous change as far as SQL Server goes. Um, in fact, our vision has changed from building more than a data platform to an information platform, serving customers both from small to medium businesses to demanding mission-critical environments mm -hmm. to providing capabilities like rich BI capabilities so customers can get insight into their line of business systems, mm -hmm. as well as lowering TCO f in terms of providing really easy to use tools for management capabilities. Yeah. But one thing we've noticed is that customers are demanding increasing flexibility from their platform choices, brought about by a need like IT infrastructure costs are taking up a larger share of their IT budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, they want more flexibility in terms of capacity planning, and they want greater capabilities provided from the platform itself. So the idea is to give customers this type of greater flexibility that they're asking for. And one of the core principles behind SQL Azure is to provide the same familiar relational database capabilities as fully managed services in the cloud. What we mean by this is customers don't, want to, don't have to worry about setting up machines, configuring instances, or any of those type of things. Mm. We provide fully managed services, which means um, taking care of high availability, patching, fault tolerance, all of that. In fact, provisioning a database is as easy as going to a website with a few clicks of the button, you can have a new database ready for you. So one of the core principles behind SQL Azure is the whole idea of fully managed services, providing platform right. capabilities as a service. Yeah. Okay. The second tenet, again, to meet these requirements of customers is to be able to scale on demand. By that, we mean the ability to provision databases on demand as you need it and have a business model that supports that mm -hmm. in terms of pay as you grow. So customers right, right. can start small and then grow as their business grows the business and grows. pay accordingly as well. And even go back. To and the... go back and scale down as well. Right. So there's a lot of flexibility there mm -hmm. um, for customers. And the third principle, side scaling, is allow customers to be able to innovate faster and use the same set of skills that they're already familiar with. Mm -hmm. So SQL Azure uses the same T-SQL-based programming model that you have with SQL Server. Developers can use the same familiar frameworks and libraries that they're used to in their coding environment. And in a lot of cases, it's as simple as changing a connection string to connect to a database in the cloud. So um, customers can continue to work with the tools that they're familiar with. Um, tools like Visual Studio have integration for SQL Azure. Mm -hmm. So you can you know, uh, 
look at database constructs right from your Visual Studio environment. Right. Other tools like SQL Server Management Studio, SQL Server mm -hmm. Integration Services, mm -hmm. all of this supports SQL Azure as well. Mm -hmm. So the three key principles, That's again, it. to summarize would be the whole notion of having database capabilities as fully managed services in the cloud, a business model as well as technology that supports scaling on demand and scaling back, and the yeah, third is okay. developer skills that transfer back and forth. How would you answer to a question that is quite common at first mm -hmm. for people who are thinking about adoption? Is it, why do they make a SQL in the cloud? I mean, if you have the cloud, if you have the platform, and you have the operating system, why not just put a SQL server, standard SQL server there, and mm -hmm. then uh, make that, that program recover the information? What's the differential offer? Mm -hmm. that SQL Azure uh, keeps in the cloud uh, in respect to the same installation of just a standard SQL server on running on, at uh, running on yeah. Windows Azure. All right. Uh, well, the big benefit between SQL Azure running um, in the cloud right. is that we provide platform capabilities as a service. Okay. It's not just a grid of computers that we are providing to customers. It's the whole higher layer of providing platform capabilities as a service. Mm -hmm. So it's to touch upon the things that I spoke about earlier, that being fully managed services. Customers don't have to, you know, acquire machines, create VMs, worry about patching, worry about high availability, yes. all of those capabilities. We take care of all of that for you. In right. fact, with SQL Azure, customers have three copies of a database automatically in the cloud, a primary yeah. and two secondaries. Mm -hmm. So automatic high availability and fault tolerance. Mm -hmm. uh, we also take care of you know, patching. Most physical administration tasks are taken care of for you completely right. so that right. developers and administrators can focus more on the application that they're building. So in the case, like you said right before, in the case that the, the business grows, Mm -hmm. The business grows and everything grows with the business at the same time. I mean, the, That's right. The management of the SQL data that is implied in the application, the application scalability itself, uh, the, the capability of the Windows Azure uh, installation that, that you made. Exactly right. The whole thing and work it all together. Like they said, I, that reminds me, somebody told me yesterday, uh, better together, as they said, from <laughs> like in SAML and uh, C Sharp at the very beginning of the, of the WPF uh, uh, paradigm. Well, the, uh, that's right. The whole idea is to give higher level platform capabilities as services for customers. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. So that you know, they offload those cap uh, responsibilities over to us, mm -hmm. and they don't have to worry about it themselves. And instead, they can focus on the type of application they're building. Well, as I said to you, to you before, when we were coming here to the press area, uh, I am here representing uh, Solid Quality Mentors, and this company uh, is one of the first mm -hmm. that really have deployed a huge, I mean, a very big application using the cloud and using most of the basic technologies that they've been talking about these days in the, in the keynote and so on. It's for uh, a quite important uh, real estate company, uh, it's Hollywood, and they use, well, the, you know, the, the, the three slices, if you want to see it that way, so on, on one side, the SQL Azure capabilities for the data storage, uh, a lot of BI in, in, in the middle, and also uh, on the client side, they use Silverlight mm -hmm. uh, to make a more dynamic presentation of the info, which is the you know the main goal. Uh -huh. And I would like to ask you about the of the opinion of the CEO of the of Solid, uh, quite well known Fernando Guerrero. He was a speaker for many for many years uh, here in Tekkad, and he said in the last editorial that um, in the same way that data, uh, standard data, gave you, in a way, the history of the company and the, the actual, the current uh, situation of the, of the company, with a new information that you can retrieve from that same set of data, mm -hmm. using data mining techniques, let's mm -hmm. to say something, is starting to be able to give you the future. So you have the past, the present, and the, and the future. Uh -huh. Until what point do you agree with this? Uh, it, I do point? agree very much with uh, 
what he said, like if you take a look at the evolution of um, SQL Server, mm -hmm. like I spoke about earlier, started off as a data platform, and we've evolved a vision to make it an information platform. And the whole idea is, you know, to give a richer set of capabilities for customers. It's more than just a database capability, but help them get the insights that they need from their business. Right. So, which is why we've made a lot of investments in tools like, I mean, and capabilities like BI and so on. Mm -hmm. And in fact, to talk about SQL Azure in that context, it's taking the same information platform vision and extending it to the cloud. So, in addition to the SQL Azure database that we have right now, we also recently announced at the Professional Developers Conference SQL Azure reporting. So we're building right. familiar um, reporting capabilities that you have with SQL Server, but this time provided as a cloud-based reporting service, mm -hmm. which you can embed both in cloud-based applications as well as in on-premises applications. That's what I want to say. So right. that's, that's important. Yes. Right. And we have other capabilities like SQL Azure Data Sync to keep data um, synchronized, to, synchronized right. from on-premises SQL Server right. to SQL Azure or between SQL Azure instances in different data centers in the cloud mm -hmm. synchronized as well. So there's a lot of possibilities with this in terms of extending your data assets um, from branch offices to the cloud or from mobile devices over to the cloud or from offline cached applications back to the cloud. And, and another question that comes out quite often, it's in relation with the small business. Mm -hmm. I mean, they say, okay, this maybe it's very interesting for let's say medium, large companies with, mm -hmm. who are able to move or, or manage uh, a lot of information, uh, gigabytes or terabytes or whatever, but what about small businesses? That, does it make sense to use all that technology and, and, and what about the, the, the total cost of ownership yeah. of the... And actually, the I, of I would emphasize that this is a particularly good solution for small businesses as well. Because if you look at some of the challenges that small businesses face, acquiring hardware, software, provisioning, management, that's a huge undertaking. And small businesses especially would really benefit from the capabilities being prov uh, provided through the cloud with SQL Azure. Like I mentioned, you can literally go to a website with a few clicks of a button, have a database provision for you. Mm -hmm. And that takes a whole lot of headache away from small businesses that they would otherwise have had to deal with. So I think it's a very good solution for small businesses. Yeah. And what about this, this topic about data mining? Uh -huh. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be more and more intricate to, to the SQL other engine with the time, or is it going to maintain uh, in the BI area, let's say? So it depends on the type of data mining workload. But uh, all I can say at this stage is that you know, we do want to extend the whole information platform vision that we have with SQL Server to the cloud. Right. And where it makes sense, we'll make the appropriate investments. We're already seeing some um, products delivered from that vision, like I mentioned, SQL Azure reporting. And over time, we will add on more capabilities. Mm -hmm. But um, about specific investments that we are making related to data mining, I mean, I can't you know, speak about anything at this time. Great. Yeah. Okay. And what are the challenges? With SQL I mean, Azure? What's, uh, yeah, right. Well, one of the, the challenges... have to be solved. Yeah. One of the big challenges we're facing right now is just getting the word out. I mean, most people don't realize how simple it is to use mm -hmm. SQL Azure. It really is. So um, we have free trial offers that not many people know about. You can go to our website and at no cost try this out. Mm -hmm. So just getting that word out is like... A, something it's a challenge that we face. I've seen that, I've seen yeah. that. I've seen you uh, just a while ago offering a one month, was it? Uh, That's right. We, trial? But I mean, uh, those developers who have MSD and subscriptions, mm -hmm. they can use that to avail of, um, you know, uh, <laughs> free threshold amounts within the Azure environment. Yeah. And um, they can, there's a base free amount that we provide for customers who want to try it out. So I'd encourage people to just go ahead and try it out. Okay. okay. Well, just to, to, to finish the, this whole profile, uh, okay, let's imagine that we, are, we have decided to go to the cloud because we are a company, medium-sized mm -hmm. company. We have decided to go to the cloud. We assume that it's not to be really painful, the learning curve. I mean, because mm -hmm. we are going to learn quite, quite easily. And there is one pending thing. 
Okay, I know it's very scalable. I know it's very available, mm -hmm. right? But what about performance? Mm -hmm. It's going to be the same? So, it, the performance is a difficult question because it really depends on the type of application that you're building. Right? Um, I know, I know. But, I, can, uh, I can point you to some independent let's benchmark you have studies. The same kind of application. Okay, I know I have, I have tuned my, my SQL Server scenario mm -hmm. in, in my company, and I want to move. Mm -hmm. And I would like to have a, let's say, not a penalty mm -hmm. just because of I moved to the, to the cloud. Mm -hmm. Do you think SQL Astro can cope with that? Sure. It, again, like I said, it all depends on the type of situation. We've seen lots of customers who get the same type of performance that they would get from an on-premises environment. We've seen customers who get better performance from a cloud environment because they've written the application to take advantage of the scale-out capabilities provided by the cloud. So they, in those cases, they actually get better performance. And then again, there are lots of things that you can do to improve performance. For example, if your um, application is running in the cloud in Windows Azure, you can co-locate your SQL Azure um, implementation in the same data center. So that way you get better performance um, right. being in the same place. So. And what about the T-SQL language? The T-SQL language is the same T-SQL language you use with SQL Server. So I think that's a really wonderful thing because customers can you know, leverage the same skills that they have and use that in the mm -hmm. cloud. All right. And the way the uh, store procedures work, it's going to be, it has to be touched, uh, it, modified in some way, or? No, not at all. Everything works as it does in the on-premises environment. Well. There are some things that are a little different with the cloud. For example, in the cloud, when we talk about a database, that's a logical database that you think of, rather than a physical database. Yeah. So some T-SQL constructs that give you access to server-level physical information about the machine where it's deployed will no longer be applicable in the cloud because it doesn't make much sense here anymore. So those type of constructs don't carry over over to the cloud, but um, the rest of the things work pretty well. Okay, so, so what will be your final message? My final message would be, those of you who work with SQL Server or other relational databases, um, this would be a time to consider the cloud. This is one of the big shifts in the industry is undergoing at this period of time. And what I want to tell you is that it's not really that difficult to try SQL Azure. It's very simple. We've got some free offers. Go ahead and try it out. If you're familiar with SQL Server, it's that much easier for you because you really don't have to learn anything new. You can just go provision a new database in that cloud and start working with it right away with the same tools that you're using right now. All right. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, Tano, for your time. And let's see how the SQL Azure panorama keeps it going. Yeah, thank you very much, Marina. Bye-bye. Nice talking to you. Bye.